what does empty make us feel? Empty can make me feel disappointed, especially if it's chocolate. Um, sad, frustrated, um, a little bit lost, especially on the old coffee cup or teacup. Sometimes I think I definitely haven't drunk all of that tea and uh, it turns out I have drunk that tea. Have to double check what color cup I had. Worried, disappointed, um, full of, sometimes it can make us anxious. If you found that car empty and you needed petrol to get somewhere for an appointment, then maybe that raises anxiety. Uh, maybe it's numbness. Empty can make us feel a whole host of things. If we have found ourselves to have an empty nest or an empty heart from someone passing away, we can feel sadness and numbness too. And all these things are true when we find things empty, except when we find the tomb is empty. Because when the tomb is empty, there is a bit of confusion, a, a moment of wondering how and why and what's gone on. And yet there's glory and awe and wonder and peace and joy and a newness to life. Paul later writes, Paul was one of the followers of Jesus and he later writes that death has been swallowed up. Where, O oh death? is your victory where O oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is law but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ that empty tomb gives us a different feeling to finding butters empty and chocolates empties and cars empties and even wardrobes empties and back in John 11 uh, Jesus raises Lazarus, his friend from the dead. And we actually looked at that back in August in the summer. And he was a four day old dead man. I mean, that's smelly. That's not um, fresh and okay. That's bad. Um, they used to put lots of perfume on people so that you couldn't smell them. And why did he raise him from the dead? To reveal the glory of God. Martha uh, Lazarus's sister feels so empty when Jesus arrives and she says what if only you were here if only that other person had filled this back up we sometimes feel if only this hadn't happened and Jesus's response to her is I am the resurrection and the life anyone who believes in me even though they're going to die Whoever lives and believes will have life and never die. And he says to her, do you believe this? And she says, yeah, I believe it, but that's gonna happen in the future. That's gonna happen. Um, not yet. Lazarus is, what good is that to me today almost, she says. And then Jesus calls Lazarus out. Resurrection now. Resurrection, not some distant future hope, an empty tomb then, now. Hope, wonder, glory, newness of life, peace. We've made, here is a tomb. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. The tomb is empty. I'll just get my hands right. And we have looked at all these ways this um, last Lent for how Jesus says, I am, who Jesus says he is. And this last one that we are looking at reveals that he is God. Yeah, I'm going to um, have to bend my, so we have them all here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. I'm going to have to do these in order that I've written down. I'm the bread of life. This, this one was the hardest. If you can make a better Lego bread than I can, this is like a slice of bread, you see. Um, then I'm willing to accept tuition on making bread out of Lego. Uh, I'm the bread of life. I will give you nourishment in the person of Jesus. He says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. So here are the branches and the vine with a bunch of grapes, obviously. Uh, dwell in me, abide in me, stick with me. Uh, I'm the way, the truth and the life. When we trust God and believe in his word, I am the light of the world. Here's our little candle. And this was a well. 
I am the light of the world, our guide and our challenger to follow Jesus. He is the door, the door who, the gateway to the sheepfold for our leading us to safety and refuge because he is the good shepherd, leading us to good restful pastures um, that we may have life and have life to the full. And what is that life? It is a resurrected life with an empty tomb where death is defeated and we have newness and restoration, peace and joy and an overflow of heart. But you see, resurrection is something you've got to experience. And sometimes the way we say things tells us that we've experienced it or we feel it or we understand it. A lesson in saying it right. CJ Craig, press secretary, cannot say Galileo 5 for it. It's just part of her job. Whereas Sam Seaborn says the Galileo 5. There was another story that I came across with a similar point to illustrate around noted a 20th century conductor, Bernard Reichel, uh, was conducting a final rehearsal for Handel's Messiah. Um, and when the soprano soloist came to in with the refrain, I know that my redeemer liveth, she sang with flawless precision, technique, perfect breathing and clear enunciation. After completing her part, everyone looked to the conductor, expecting praise and wonder at how well she'd sung it and his approval. But with a motion of his baton for silence, he walked over to her and said almost sorrowfully, sadly to her, my dear, do you know that your redeemer lives? And uh, a little embarrassed, she answered, I, I think I do. He said, then sing it. He said, he actually cried it. He said, he said cried, sing it. Uh, tell it to me so that I know you've experienced the joy and the power of it. So then he motioned for the orchestra to rebegin. And she sang with profound truth, with a fervor that told the personal belief of her faith in her risen Lord. Those who listened wept and the old master's eyes filled with tears. And he said to her, you do know for this time you have told me. We can easily say the refrain we started our service with, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we know it and we say it happily and easily. But there's a way in which we can also say it when we truly know it and truly believe it. The power of the resurrection impacts the world and it impacts us when we live it. It changed Mary's life, Peter, John, Thomas, all the disciples and later Paul. They all experienced the power of the resurrection in their life. Through the being in the garden, through finding linen cloths folded, through meals with fish and physical touch and finding Jesus's hands to have been scarred. This led them to a life that they never expected. The resurrection isn't just a theory. It's not just something nice that we celebrate once a year. We are the resurrection people. We have experienced Jesus's hope and life changing forgiveness within our own lives. The disciples had to experience it in their own way. Christ who won victory over sin and death for the world, won it for each of us, for you and for me. Christ's death and resurrection is personal and it brings wonder, glory, restoration, newness, fullness, joy, peace, overflowing cups when we find that tomb is empty. We can take our empty problems to Jesus and he will meet that need. I can't tell you how because he will meet it each individually for your specific situation and he will burst in if we allow his presence to 
resurrect our situations and lives. So that as we declare, he is risen. We say it with the full experience of faith, which we have had in our lives. And so if you'd like to unmute yourselves, you may join me because we'll do it again. And if it has indeed impacted your life, even a tiny grain of sand, we're going to say it like Sam Seaborn says, Galileo 5, not CJ Cray. <laughs> now the singer sung it, uh, that her redeemer lived <clears throat> after she had sung it with all the expression of experience. So I say to you again this morning, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Don't open that door. What have you all been doing? All right, I'm going to hand over to Robert, who has a poem that some of us have put, some of you have put together. Um, thank you for those that have partaked in this. Uh, sit back and enjoy this. Jesus in the garden, newly risen from the dead, who stood by weeping Mary and who heard the word she said as if you were the gardener, till at last your shepherd's voice called her Mary and with one word gave her reason to rejoice. Jesus in the garden ever knew, but still the same. Help me recognise you in the speaking of my name. Jesus on the journey, fellow traveller on the road, who met two sad disciples, walking them as you showed. The meaning of the scripture that predicted you would rise, but only when you blessed the meal could they believe their eyes. Jesus on the journey, meet me where my hopes have fled. Help me recognise you in the breaking of the bread. Jesus in the locked room, breaking through despair and doubt. Who comforted your friends when they had shut the whole world out? Who came again for Thomas and revealed your hands and side, so that he could touch and know you as alive though you had died? Jesus in the locked room, breaking through our self-built bars. Help me recognise you in the touching of your scars. Jesus on the shoreline cooking breakfast for your friends, who offered guilty Peter one more chance to make amends, who filled a net with a fish for him and helped him to recall the first catch that convinced him to respond to your first call. Jesus on the shoreline, know my best, forgive my work, help me recognise the way I met you first. May you recognise Jesus. Uh, may you recognise and experience the resurrection with wonder and with love, because this empty isn't disappointment, heartache and sorrow. This is resurrected empty that brings life, joy and fullness to us. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he give you his peace today and each day. Amen.